Yeah, good morning guys. Welcome back to Loose Fishing Mission. Thank you for tuning in. Couldn't help myself. Back at the whiting spot. You may recall I did a, quite a few videos in a row here at this location a couple of months back. So much fun. I'm back here. It's Christmas break. It's early morning. I have uh, given away my sleep in and come out because the tides are perfect. Nice early morning bite. It's 6 a.m. Low tide 6.30, so I'll get the last of the run out, first of the run in. This is what I like to fish here. Walk the beach back with the rising water as the whiting are moving up the flats. I've got my ever faithful Bass Day Sugar Pen Splash, this guy here. And uh, 75 mil lure, you would have seen in previous videos. The whiting do not shy away from it, even though it's a larger lure. Put nine and 10 centimeter whiting on this lure, so see how we go today like I said love doing this stuff like you four to ten pound similar reaction 2500 egg beater six pound braid eight pound leader get a few flatties here as well but mainly whiting is what I'm targeting today and I'd love to take some home for breakfast can't beat a feed of whiting amazing let's see how we go guys there's about a 10 knot northerly punting straight in on me right here it won't be too bad I should be able to cast out no worries a little bit of a chop on the water as well, which is actually advantageous when you're doing the popping for whiting. But uh, this cloud cover in the early morning, I can't see where the drains are and the channels are at the moment until the sun comes up. So, see how we go for a little while. See what we can get. I, don't know, I think I see a, either a current line or a bit of a drop off just in front of me here. I'm sort of walking through ankle deep water at the moment so it's too shallow but maybe just here trying to find that structure in the middle of nowhere you know sand flats can be an abyss can be a real desert but try to find those little drop offs a little bits of shale a little gutters that's where your fish should be i can see something here like a bit of a change in water depth i think got one guys didn't take long small little whiting all right i know they're here about second or third cast of the morning it's a little fish but it goes to show you don't need a big fish to eat a top water lure especially even a large top water lure like this 75 mil lure that's probably a 15 centimeter fish twice the size of it so they are vicious little buggers eh that was literally my second or my third cast so that's really cool it's giving me the confidence that I have found that little bit of a drop off there, even though it's harder to see at the moment without the sun, but beautiful early morning, prime time for top water. However, that's traditional top water, early morning, late afternoon, but whiting, I feel I've caught them all day on popper. It doesn't have to be early or late, but I feel earlier is probably better. Well, late is probably better again. And I got that now, the early morning and a tide change in half an hour. So. As you've probably seen in my previous whiting videos, if you haven't checked them, go have a look at them. But this lure is actually a little splash popper. Little prawn profile splash popper, but it walks the dog as well. So you've got two retrieves in one. I like to um, pop it obviously in the stiller water, but when the tide's running, running a fair bit, and I like to keep in contact with my lure, I will just do this. I would walk the dog about one twitch every quarter turn. Oh, and there's a fish. Oh, well, there was a fish. Hey, something had to go. <laughs> something had to go as I was doing that. I'm simply walking the dog right now. So it's actually meandering like a stick bait right now. And I like doing that when there's a bit more wind or a bit more wave chop. Because when you're blooping and popping, sometimes there's too much wind or wave chop, it could sort of cartwheel, any poppers can can cartwheel and then you foul up your assist hooks or you foul up your travel hooks on your line oh they're having a go again but keeping it consistently moving like this you're able to keep it moving at the same pace same speed and it doesn't foul up at nowhere near as much it's still a really seductive offering to the whiting as well and i've had two hits in the last two casts out here there's a couple of fish so just want one to swallow it well not swallow it but you know hook up that last fish I got on those cyst hooks too, like changing to the assist hooks is definitely a good thing when chasing whiting. I always seem to catch them on the trailing hooks out the back. Small little sharp atomic trick bits. 
size eights. It's always good to keep moving, covering water all the time. Haven't had a hit for a few casts now, so I'll continue moving upstream. I'm still meandering it like a stick bait right now, because that wind's picking up. Wind's coming this way, tide's going that way. Got a bit of wind versus tide action here. With whiting, it's super important to keep the lure moving at all times. They're very flighty in this shallow, clear water, so they get one look at it. If they get a good look at it when it's paused, they'll get a good look and be like, that's not quite real, I'll leave it alone. You keep it moving at all times, and they'll aggressively hunt it down because they think it's gonna get away. A little prawn skipping away from them. Let's go. A couple of fish would be nice for brekkie. A couple of legal fish, obviously. 23 centimeters being legal size on whiting. Now with this light, with this cloud cover, I'm really struggling to find the deeper drop-offs. Really shallow water where I've been peppering, not realizing how shallow it was because of the glare on the water, you just can't see. Not even with the polarized on. When the sun gets up, it'll actually help me here. On those deeper drop-offs. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it feels better. Better whiting. Feels like a nice whiting right there at the edge of that drop-off too. Oh, definitely a whiting. It's not a bad one too. Oh yes. Oh, hey, jumping. Little marlin. Oh, I lost him. Oh no, still there. Still there. Still there. Feels like a good fish. Not too bad, it'd be, um, it'd be illegal, for sure. Hooked in the side too, made him feel bigger than he was. Here we go, first decent whiting of the morning. Pretty nice fish. He'd be high 20s, 28, something like that. On the assist hooks in the mouth and the treble hook in the side. It's actually a pretty nice fish. He's definitely coming home for, uh, for brekkie. Lovely whiting. First legal one of the morning, assist hooks in the mouth, treble hooks in the side, he's about 28 centimetres. And the first one of a few, hopefully, that will be joining me for breakfast date. So much fun on the light gear and the little popper. Bass Day Sugar Pen Splash. Great way to spend an early morning. This little sand crab has gone up to try to eat me whiting. I've got me whiting just sitting there, trying to keep it fresh in the water. But it's attracting the crabs, which gives me an idea, potentially do a bluey video, going to catch some crabs like this, bring a few frames next time I come down, put them in the water. That's only been in there five minutes, and the crabs are finding it. And this guy come from a few meters that way. I could see the bow wave as he was walking up to it. As the water's rushing out that way, you could see the actual bow wave from this tiny little crab but that's given me ideas to go and uh, target a few blueies collect a few crabs there's a whiting behind it come on eat it oh didn't eat a couple of fish in this little gutter guys i found it's just very shallow there very shallow there but this tiny little deeper gutter there's a couple of fish in here. I'll just meander it so I keep the consistent pace so we can line it up better. That's the thing, sometimes if you're missing the fish and you're popping it, you know, the popper by very means of what they do is you pop it and you pull it, but it could be striking at that very inopportune moment where you are pulling it away. But if you are meandering, walking the dog, maintaining the same speed the whole time without looping it away, fish will line it up better. If you're missing the strike on the pop, try the walk the dog retrieve. Got one, it's tiny. Yeah, it's still there, tiny whiting. Well, this will showcase how vicious they are. Check this out. 
probably 11, 12 centimeters. Well, there you go. They're pretty vicious, these little guys, aren't they? Don't need to be a big fish, big whiting to eat a topwater lure. So much fun. The tide is still running out, surprisingly. I'm getting less and less water to fish, so I've got to find these little drains where it's a bit deeper. Otherwise, it's just pretty much sand flats or ankle deep. But the tide is probably five minutes, I reckon, off turning. And then it's going to come in flat out. We've had a big full moon a couple of nights ago, so tides are big. And I like the first of the run in, creeping up the beach, chasing whiting on top water lures anyway. So it should actually get better, hopefully, the action, as the water starts to come in. Three whiting so far. Two small ones and one good one. So guys, I think it's just worth touching on this lure and a couple of different retrieves. As I've previously mentioned, this is a popper, right? A little splash popper, but you can actually meander it, walk the dog as well. So having those couple of retrieves is fantastic. So for two reasons, and the difference between popping and meandering or walking the dog can be substantial. And the benefits you can apply by applying the two different scenarios is really, really good. So when there's like i said when there's chop on the water blooping can be very hard because you might be sort of cartwheeling into the next wave or the next the wave behind it picks it up and it just you know you'll foul up your assist hooks over the line which is frustrating when you're casting into the wind and then if the fish are flighty as well and they're not quite smashing your lure when you're blooping or you're blooping it and they're missing it a constant walk the dog like this it enables them to line it up a lot better because it's producing the same speed the whole way and they can line it up better, they can get a better angle on it and smash it, they can anticipate where it's going to be. But when you're blooping, they may very well be going for it at this second and then as you're blooping, it, you're pulling it away. So there's a couple of real good advantages to a, a popper slash stick bait that you can do both. So this is the Bass Day Splash 75 mil and you can do both with it and I think it's certainly worth mentioning that because if you can get a lure that you can bloop and meander in the same retrieve or change your action from cast to cast based on the conditions based on what the fish are doing i think that's a fantastic thing so be smart when you're trying this stuff there's a significant difference between popping and meandering and they're both bloody effective on their day and sometimes on a particular day one method one retrieve will be better than the other on the other hand i think it's also worth noting with the popper obviously you're making those more aggressive bloops through the water and you may fire the fish up more so when the fish are really angry really hungry popping or blooping uh popper you know, the ones like this that spit the water or the bigger cup face ones that make a more aggressive sound will fire the fish up even more than a seductive stick bait. But like I said, when they're more flighty, the uh, stick bait meander side to side, walk the dog works a treat. But when, they, when you want to fire them fish up, when they're aggressive, the popper is hard to beat when you retrieve like that. Just gets them all fired up super aggressively. So there's definitely pros and cons to the popper and the stick bait. So if you use the uh, Bass Day Sugar Pen Splash, this guy here, you can literally do both in the one retrieve if you want, or change it up cast to cast. I think the tide has just turned. When you see the froth starting to push up on the sandbars like this, it means the water is incoming and encroaching on the sand flats and the sandbars. I've been fishing really skinny water. I've still got the three fish. There's been a dropping tide the whole morning. It's just turned. There's a bit of a delay here because the bar's out the front, but it's obviously now pushing in. As you can see with this froth and foam, the water is pushing up now and creating that foam. So it's definitely turned, which is great. Should start to put a bit more water through here, a bit more depth. The fish should be moving up. Fish on. Oh, it hit it pretty hard off the top. What is it? A little flatty, is it? Yeah, it is flathead. <laughs> That's why the take was a little bit more feisty. Look at that. He's completely buried himself in the sand. I can't even see him. I can't even see him. 
Oh, there he goes, man. Camouflage. Look, they just sit there. Lure in the mouth. I could only see the red of the lure. That's pretty cool though. Little flatty. I'll take him to the bank and uh, use the pliers and get him off. Let him just sit there again. He actually buried in the sand. Like, he's just sitting there now on top. But before, he just buried. I literally couldn't see him till I was right over the top of it and took off. All right. Another good way to tell when the tide's coming in, the flatties are moving up. It's a pretty fish, eh? He's going home. He's probably just legal, but I'll let him go. Not big enough for my liking. Warrant keeping him. Yeah, the tire's definitely pushing in now. You can sort of see it here. Come on, keep going. There you go, Found deep water. Another time when I like to meander the top water lure rather than pop is when there is a uh, a lot of flow, like in the fresh water, if there's a big flow, it's really advantageous to walk the dog back. Um, it's harder to work it when there's a lot of, you know, it's harder to work the popper when there's a lot of flow. It doesn't swim quite right, so you track it back meandering. Um, also in a estuarine system when there's a lot of flow with a big tide coming in or going out, I often find myself walking the dog then because once again it tracks easier and better and swims more effectively in those higher flow conditions. Tide converging now. Coming in quick. Coming in from all angles. Time and tide waits for no man, they say. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see all those white caps out there, but there's a stiff 15 knot breeze coming straight on me now from the north, northeasterly, straight to where I'm fishing. So it's making things difficult. But going back to what I was saying earlier about your retrieve, right now, because there's waves and there's strong winds, I'm reverting to the walk the dog meandering action with the top water lure. Just because it's easier to work, and if I was to pop it and bloop it, I'd potentially get more foul ups where the uh, assist hooks here end up going over your line. So, certainly worth walking the dog when the wind kicks up or there's wave action. High flows, like I've been saying this whole time. It's really a video about trying to teach you guys the differences between the top water walker and the popper and when to use both actions or both techniques in your retrieve. What, can, what environmental conditions would lend itself better to a certain, uh, certain retrieve? Yeah, guys, I'm calling it. It's turned real gnarly in here. The wind's picked up, the waves have picked up. It's really hard to work. The top water lure now in this wave and wind action. Um, the water's gotten dirty as well. It is a tide change now, so the wind naturally does pick up around then. But today I got three whiting, one real nice one, two small ones, and one little flatty as well on the top water. But the point of difference with today's video, like I've done a few now on whiting on top water, was to show you the differences and when to use certain techniques on your retrieve with your top water lures. So your meandering side to side works really good when there's more wind, more waves, uh, more flow. And then the popping obviously works better when there's less of that. Otherwise it fouls up on your uh, assist. If you want to fire the fish up more, you work that popper. So there's certainly advantages to getting a lure that does both. So these guys definitely do that. The uh, Bass Day Sugar Pen Splash 75 mil. So now while some people will watch a video, a fishing video, just to watch someone fishing because they like fishing, I actually try and get something across, a tip, a technique, something that will try and help you guys catch more fish. Give this a bit of a go. Um, I think 80% of people want to keep learning. So I'm hoping you're getting that out of my videos. That's trying, that's what I'm trying to portray, that's what I'm trying to put across. Hints and tips and techniques to try and help you catch more fish. Guys, thank you so much for your support in 2023. 
Hope 2024 you can continue to support me and uh, hope it's even bigger. Hope you guys get out and smack a few fish over the break. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.